Hey everyone, and welcome to Motion Tutorials, where we go over weekly topics in motion graphics, visual effects, and 3D animation. I'm your host, Sean Frangella, and this week we have a really fun tutorial going over my top five features of the Element 3D version 2.2 update. So E3D was just updated to version 2.2, and it's a lot of little updates here and there, and some stuff that'll really help workflow, and some things, if you're familiar with other 3D applications, are a nice welcome to Element 3D to get it up to speed with some little bits and pieces of things that are really helpful for working in 3D environments and just little things that'll make it easier to work with. So let's get started with the list. Number one, exporting E3D and OBJ models. So this is something that'll really help workflow as you're working and building stuff. So what I have here is this basic 3D logo that's been extruded from these three shapes in Illustrator. So the process for this is you take each shape, you put it on a different solid as a mask, then Element 3D, you add custom mask, you go into scene setup, and you extrude each one, and then assign each extrusion a different custom path. Rotate it around and kind of build this. So this is kind of a custom little thing that I built, and before it would basically be linked to just this composition where I need to have these three things in. And that was kind of a pain if, say, I just want that built object now as a reusable asset, or I want a new composition, I just want to drop that in. It wasn't really straightforward before. Now what I could do is on the element effect, go to utilities, and there's this group export and export OBJ, where I could pick different groups, and I press generate, and it's going to pop open my finder window, and this is where I'll save this model, so I'll just create a new folder called models, and I'll call this SF logo. 3D and it's going to export that as an E3D and OBJ. Now this is useful for a lot of reasons. One is if I'm just staying in Element 3D, now I could just have this logo inside of Element 3D without it being tied to these. So if I make a new composition, let's call this Logo 2, same thing, I'll make a new solid drop element onto it, go into Scene Setup. Now I can import and just grab that E3D file and there's my model and now it's just built from one object and I don't have to worry about all that extra stuff and I just have this as an asset that's great so now if I go to okay there it is in my scene if I just make a camera I can pull the camera back and there we go we have our logo it's not tied to those extrusions anymore it's really useful for that sort of thing and the other thing it exported is an OBJ which is a generic 3d format which is great if we go into finder and grab that right here say we wanted to bring this into other 3d programs or do other stuff with it now I can just take this and I could bring it into Cinema 4D, and it's going to import that into Cinema 4D. So there's my 3D object, and I could just retexture it if I wanted to. I could also bring that into Maya, and there's my 3D logo as just the geometry and Maya. And another cool thing we could do in After Effects is if you have the plugin Trap Code Form, which is a plugin by Red Giant, you can bring in OBJ models and use it as a point cloud. So if I make another new solid i'll call this form and then drag form onto this the way that form works is it creates particle system from things like boxes spheres or obj models right here so i could go to obj model drop that in and then just bring in that obj model into after effects the same way bring that into my composition and then on the form layer go to obj settings 3d model grab that and then if i pull the camera in and swing around now i have a trap code form model from that element 3D object and I could line them all up and do all sorts of cool stuff with particles like disperse it out. So it's pretty cool to be able to take your object from element 3D and export it as an OBJ and E3D model. There's a ton of useful settings for that and it gives you a lot of options with integrating with other 3D programs as well as just saving your assets into one solid object without having to tie it to extra things like layers or copy and pasting the whole effect into new compositions or importing that into a new project file. You can just export those as 3D models and then just import them or bring them wherever you need to. Number two, saving group folders. So say we got this logo that I was talking about and we've saved it as an E3D file if we want to and it's one thing. Another thing we could do if we go into scene setup is right click and save as model preset from group folders. So if you don't need to save out the whole model or bring it into another program, but you just want to store the folder, say we have this logo and we add some other stuff, maybe we have some circles, and I'll just pull this over here, 
and then I can hold option and drag to duplicate it. Maybe we have a bunch of stuff that we're building up. So we got this logo and let's just say we got another little circle on the top that I can move and scale down and we'll make that one Chrome. So I got this whole folder of stuff that I just want to be able to store kind of in the same way. But it's not just one little object, it's not an extrusion, it's this logo, some spheres, and a bunch of stuff with textures. Now, if I'm just saying an Element 3D, what I can do is right-click, Save as Model Preset. It's going to open up my Models folder, and I'll just drop it in the My Models, and I'll call this Logo with Spheres. Go to OK. Same idea. If I just delete all that, or I had a new Element 3D file, if I go to My Models, where I save that and just scroll down to my window. Now there it is logo with sphere. So I can bring that up and it will pull in this whole thing. So this is really useful if you're designing 3d scenes within element 3d and same idea. You need to store for later. You need to have it accessible from just your model browser and you don't want to have to copy and paste in the whole element 3d effect and layers. It really does a nice job of letting you save and organize reusable assets all within E3D. Number three, group shadows and reflections. So with version two in render settings, now we can add things besides ambient occlusion, like shadows and reflections. And the couple ways we can do that is on each model, we can go down and change the reflect mode from things like environment, mirror surface, and spherical which will change how it's calculating the reflection. And we can do things like set up actual lights in After Effects to cast actual shadows and all that sort of stuff. And these are some things that were updated in version two. So if you're looking for some tips on that, be sure to check out my earlier video, my top five features of Element 3D version two, right after this, where we go into things like shadows and reflections, as well as Cinema 4D integration, if you want to see another new option for version two. But what's new to version 2.2 is previously, say we wanted to change this reflect mode from default or environment. In this case, the environment will use this as a reflection to a spherical, which will create the idea of an HDR image all the way around this and use that to reflect back onto itself. Now we can do that, but if we have this whole group of stuff and we want it to be a little more accurate and believable, we either have to go one by one and it still wouldn't work quite right. So now what we can do is go to the group folder and you'll see that we have settings for that group folder now too. For that whole group, we can change the reflect mode from environment to spherical and then check on render self. And it's gonna take care of that for the whole group. So we don't have to go in one by one and you can see, especially in things like these spheres, we're getting a lot more realism. And then if we wanted all of this to reflect across the surface, we could do something like create a plane and I'll move that down and just scale this way up. And then I'll drop a reflective texture on this, like the pro shaders to metal and just grab one of these, like this clean metal, pull this out of that folder and we'll change this one from reflect default to mirror surface and if we move this up you can see it's reflecting the logo and the environment and if we wanted to disable the environment we could do that so it speeds it up a bit you can grab each folder and now there's additional settings for reflection mode across groups again just saving a bit of time and speeding up workflow and making things a little more realistic and upgrading our workflow just that much more Number four, symmetry. So if we go back into my scene setup, the thing with these dots, as an example, I could have built that a little easier using some new symmetry options. So let me just delete these spheres at the top and side real quick. And I'll take this one, drag it out, and then I'll right click and do a new group folder and put that sphere in it. So it's over here on the side. Now, rather than copying it and trying to line it up exactly, what I can do is go to group settings and now there's this symmetry option and this will reflect whatever is in this group by the axis on the other side. So if I do X and I'm going to get one on the side. And then if I wanted those silver ones, I could just duplicate this whole folder. I'll move this one up to the center and go to model and I'll duplicate on Y and just hide this floor. And you can see now there's one there and it's this group that's reflecting. So if I didn't actually want 
that, if I wanted that chrome one back, I could change the texture, scale that back down. So it's some really useful stuff for mirroring actual objects and organizing 3D objects within our scene and groups. And if you're familiar with other 3D programs, it's similar in Cinema 40. As an example, if we had this cone and we dropped it into a symmetry object right here, we're gonna get the same planar reflection. So it'll reflect whatever object is within here. And if you're in Maya, you could do the same sort of thing. If you got a cone, if you go to edit, duplicate special, our menu window right here, we could translate a negative value, rotate it 180, duplicate special, and that gives us a similar reflected object. So it's really useful to have this in Element 3D. We can do some really useful stuff with reflecting objects, not having to just create things. And you could even animate this stuff and the symmetrical object should follow along. So pretty cool, welcome little addition of group symmetry settings. Number five, lots of minor switches. So this is kind of a catch all for a lot of these little extra switches and compositing options that have been added for really specific uses. So if you're trying to do specific things, like just the alpha of a matte shadow, make ambient occlusion invisible per object and receive a matte reflection. And a lot of these little switches and buttons down here, there's been a lot of really specific updates. Just to show you a couple as an example, in here I have this floor, so we got our whole logo object and then it's reflecting on the floor but what if we didn't have an actual element 3d floor what if we were compositing this into a scene with footage so i'll go to okay and what i have below this is just an after effects floor and this could be anything it could be a photo or a footage and my element 3d layer lines up to it but i need not just the shadows to pass through i need that reflection to pop onto this because that's going to help with compositing so now if I go to scene setup and go to the texture for my plane model, in addition to matte shadow, I can check matte reflection. And now if I go to okay, it's gonna render that reflection the same way that it would matte shadow and matte ambient occlusion. And speaking of ambient occlusion, I have that turned on in my render settings and I have it as ray trace. So if I just turn that on and off, you can see I get my ambient occlusion and that's what's causing this first little shadow, but maybe this is too heavy on this one black circle or just one object. So again, in scene setup, if I just find that one main circle here, I might wanna turn that off. So if I go to invisible to AO and go to okay and do the same thing on these couple other bevels, I'll go to invisible to AO slash glow, go to okay. Now it's not gonna render that one object's ambient occlusion, which I might want, but I'm still gonna get the ambient occlusion of the other objects. So the point of all those is there's lots of really specific little switches that it's good to take a look at in your scene that have been added for really specific compositing things, like when you need reflections, but not the actual material, like when you need to check off things like ambient occlusion and switches for just one object. It's things that it's nice to see in there Whereas before you could get a little stuck because they were kind of just global properties of ambient occlusion and reflections are on or off in your whole project and that's it. Now you have a lot more control and that'll really help with working in a 3D environment. So in Element 3D version 2.2, there's lots of fun little updates. You can do a lot of cool new stuff and lots of little helpful tools and options to really push where Element 3D is as a 3D program. And if you want to see more Element 3D tutorials, you can check out my other videos like Top 5 Features of Element 3D Version 2, Cinema 4D Integration, Shortcuts, and UI Tips, as well as how to composite objects in Version 2 into live action footage. Be sure to check those out if you want to see more of my Element 3D videos. And be sure to subscribe on YouTube. And if you have any questions, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella. If you want to find me on any of the social networks, be sure to do that. And as always, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a lot of new tips and tricks about Element 3D version 2.2. And I will see you at the next video.
Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.